pain, the fifth vital sign. Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with the actual or potential tissue damage. After this lesson, you will identify the role of the nurse as an advocate for patients in acute and or chronic pain. Describe how to provide patient-centered care by respecting patients' preferences, values, and beliefs regarding pain and its management. And differentiate between addiction, pseudo-addiction, tolerance, and physical dependence. Pain, it's a universal, complex, subjective experience. The nurse must advocate for patient by believing reports of pain. The nurse must act promptly to relieve pain, but respect patient's preferences and values. So let's define it. It's unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Whatever the person is experiencing, it says it is. Exists whenever person says it does. Self-reports always most reliable indication of pain. Okay, so let's discuss attitudes and practices. Healthcare providers and nurse attitudes affect the interaction with patients experiencing pain. Many patients are reluctant to report pain. They want to have the desire to be a good patient. They have an fear of an addiction. There are two different types of pain. We have acute pain. The major distinction from chronic pain is the effect on biological responses. It acts as a warning sign. And there's an activation of sympathetic nervous system. Acute pain responses are an increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, increased respiratory rate, dilated pupils, and or even sweating. Then we also have chronic pain, which uh, includes cancer pain or non-cancer pain. It persists or recurs for an indefinite period, usually more than three months. Onset is gradual. It's poorly localized and often accompanied by depression. So pain transmission is a painful stimuli that often originates in extremities. If pain is not transmitted to the brain, the person feels no pain. Two specific fibers transmit periphery pain. That's the A, the delta fibers, and C, fibers. Pain categories include localized, projected, radiating, or referred. Pain sources include nociceptive pain such as somatic or visceral and then neuropathic pain. So let's discuss the impact of unrelieved pain. There will be a prolonged stress response, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, oxygen demand, decreased GI motility, causes immobility, decreased immune response, delays healing, also provides increases for risk for chronic pain. It interferes with ADLs. It causes anxiety, depression, fear, anger, sleeplessness, impairs family, work, and social relationships. It costs Americans billions per year. There is an increased length to stay in hospitals due to pain, and they could lose their income or job productivity. So let's talk about the PQRST pain assessment. P, is it precipitating or palliative? Q, quality or quantity? R, region or radiation? S, what is the severity scale? And T, for timing. Aging populations consideration for pain include greater risk for undertreated pain. The undertreatment of cancer pain due to inappropriate beliefs about pain sensitivity, tolerance, and the ability to take opioids. Collaborative management includes getting a thorough history, a physical assessment, checking the pain location, is it localized, projected, radiating, or referred, a psychosocial assessment. All pain holds significant meaning for the person that is experiencing it. Remain objective. Advocate for the proper pain control. 
Drug therapy is used when non-pharmacologic methods are not helpful. You want to administer before any procedures. Three drug groups are non-opioids, opioids, and adjuvants. Okay, first let's discuss non-opioids. We have Tylenol, non-selective NSAIDs or selective NSAIDs, aspirin, and then most NSAIDs, including aspirin, are COX-2 inhibitors for long-term use. Then we have the opioids. These are pure agonists. We have morphine. They block release of neurotransmitters in the spinal cord. Can be administered by every route. PRN range of orders. And then we have the patient controlled analgesias. Uh, they may have nausea and vomiting or constipation or sedation or respiratory depression due to opioids. Adjuvants may include SSRIs anti-epileptic drugs, muscle relaxants, alpha-2 adrenergics, local anesthetics, NMDA antagonist, and cannabinoids. So let's talk about some considerations for the aging population and opioids. You want to start low and go slow. Initially use no more than half of recommended dose. Evaluate patient response and drug effectiveness. And remember, older adults feel moderate and severe pain as much as younger adults. Well, let's discuss the analgesic ladder. These are recommended guidelines for prescribing pain medications that the physician follows based upon a pain level of 0 to 10, 10 being the most severe pain. So level 1 is usually a pain rating of 1 to 3 and generally they will prescribe a non-opioid. Level 2 is a pain rating of 4 to 6 and you use a weak opioid alone or with adjuvant drug. Level 3 is a pain rating of 7 to 10 and generally a physician will prescribe the strong opioids. Our goal is for pain control and providing pain levels that are tolerable for the patient. Other mechanisms for pain control are PCA infusions, spinal analgesias, and implantable devices. Let's talk about other methods to assist with pain. Uh, some physical interventions include complementary and alternative therapies, cutaneous stimulation, application of heat, cold pressure, therapeutic touch, massage, vibrations, even a TENS unit. Cognitive and behavioral interventions include strategies used to relieve pain as adjuncts to drug therapy such as distraction, imagery, relaxation techniques, hypnosis, acupuncture, and glucosamine. Invasive procedures for chronic pain are used when drugs or other methods are ineffective. These include nerve blocks or spinal cord stimulation. This concludes this lesson on pain. If you have any questions related to this lesson content, contact the instructor.